to the Weekly Hijack. Hello there, everyone. Uh, so our first episode tonight from Lost is called And Found. And Found. <laughs> it's our uh, first uh, Sun Gen episode of the season. Mm-hmm. Title, nice throwback to Lost in, in Translation, Translation, which was a Gen one. What was different about this one as compared to last season one was you had a Sun episode and then you had a Gen and one. This and this is the first of their dual flashback yeah. thing going on, which they do, I think, from now on, basically. Yeah, I think I think for most part, yeah. Because they're not as the two characters are not as estranged as they were for yeah. estranged, estranged, estranged. Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> they were strained, had a strained yeah. relationship, but that's not what I meant. This is a very sweet episode. It is a very sweet <laughs> episode. I don't think it's one that uh, stands out particularly among like the you know the most top memorable yeah. episodes of Lost, but it is very it's it's very sweet um, about how they first met. Yeah, it's it's interesting, you know the the main on island story. I mean, there's her trying to find her, her wedding ring, but for all the mythology people, it's the whole going after Michael and the others and all this sort of like yeah. hush hush. And it's just very interesting to balance that. Is this very personal sort of romance story in the flashback? It's an interesting. I, I shouldn't have mentioned it at all. This is a Damon Lindelof, Carson Cuse episode. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and interesting balance. Yeah, very personal amidst the ongoing kind of sense of of doom i guess you could say <laughs> exactly like what is going on you know just who are these others well i mean it's it's interesting in retrospective in the in late later seasons you kind of disparage the others in that they didn't really seem to know as much as they let on they yeah. did but it is it's really interesting here to see how I mean, it seemed before how scared the survivors were, but Echo is a big dude. Yeah. And, you know, it's clear that he has some pretty experiences behind him, you know, and, the, and you know, we know from his flashbacks that he, he's, he's had some... You don't mess with Echo. No, you, you, don't, you don't mess with Echo, and yet he is quite intimidated by these people. They, so. I think they just have so much mystery, and they can sneak around, you know, they're just, there's so much unknown when you're on this island. Yeah. Oh, and the and, island and trust issues. The, yeah, that's true. And the, I mean, the island is their home. Most yeah. most of them live there all their lives, know, so they know all, all the ins and outs. You were asking uh, when they were walking past, which is a great scene. They're just waiting there. Yeah, yeah. waiting there, and then feet start going by, and then a teddy bear. You're like, uh, <laughs> yeah. But Natasha's like, everyone during while we're watching it, she's like, "Why are they all? They're like natives. I mean, that's what they look like there." I know. Later, you find out. You know, that the guys with the beards, that was all fake. I wonder, are they faking it here for some reason? Or I know you, what's the big deal? Uh, the others are kind of odd because you get the sense that the Ben kind of was like the Dharma others, but the pure others seem more hippie-ish, like more nature in tune with the island. And Ben kind of well, I think got there's sidetracked a, from that to a certain extent. He, he got sidetracked a bit, but I don't know that he was the only one. Because, like, in the flashback, we see... Or not flashback, but... When time travel. Tra- time traveling. <laughs> yeah. You see, uh, during the Widmore era, you've got a lot of the British army guys that oh, had yeah. kind of drafted into the yeah. others for a bit. And they, you know, they're still very militarized during that yeah. uh, that stage. But there are, like, yes, there are still the, like... Especially pure others, I the guess. The pure temple people are very... Yeah. I mean, like, Cindy drinks the Kool-Aid at some point. Yeah, and I guess she, she hangs out at the temple, isn't that right? Yeah, I, I mean, she's, like, hanging out with, what, Zach and whatever the girl's name is, the two kids. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the others are never really fully explained. I mean, deep down otherness is not yeah. fully explained. I mean, you get the vibe that there's always been fractions within them. Yeah. But you don't really know a whole lot about what those different fractions believe. Yeah. So that's the only thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we normally don't see him quite that muddy and whatever. But I guess Ben even sets himself up in this episode as being very beat up and Ben. Well, Henry Gale. He's not in this episode. I mean, this season. Oh, this season. He, he sets okay. himself yeah. up in the very like yeah distraught sort of way. So maybe they're maybe they were playing it up for everyone. I don't know. It's possible. I mean, the fact that they went around without shoes, that could just be part of the, you know, not leaving tracks thing. And Mystique, yeah. And, I, you know, when you said they don't leave tracks, partly maybe it was that, and partly I wonder, you know, there is a system of tunnels, well, too. Well, yeah. Yeah, I've always been curious, when did they get into that? Because I remember, I, I, that's vaguely somewhere in my NOS Well, it, it's one of those things that you hear a lot more than, I mean, you, they get bits and pieces of it. 
in the later seasons, but okay. it's not something they get very d- deep into. Yeah. I think it's one of those things you almost connect the dots more than. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't rem- we'll we'll have to see. It'll be interesting to see when that comes yeah. up because I, I have a vague recollection of it, but I don't remember much of one. So so we'll see. Another great episode too for using an item to really focus emotional intensity. Oh, you know, we talked about you know ring. back a mm-hmm. um, couple episodes where Jack's way more upset than he should be. Yeah, and obviously this whole find the the wedding ring, which is kind of nice. It's a nice parallel with the Michael thing too because they're both looking for something that's lost. No, oh, that's true. Um, yeah. I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah. Michael doesn't find his, though. Well, no, I guess they find Michael, though. Well, so. <laughs> well like, a lot, Michael himself lost for a bit, yeah. But yeah, my, yeah, and Michael never really does find Walt well. I mean, he does find him, but... <laughs> but not, yeah, not a, a good way. But. Um, another thing, you, you, you had some thoughts about Anne Lucia this time, Natasha. Oh, she's just one of my favorite cuddly <laughs> characters. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's so annoying. <laughs> She's so prickly. She yes. She makes Sawyer look like a teddy bear. <laughs> I mean, later I I like her. I grow to like her, but she is man. She's not nice. <laughs> no. And I know I come in during the episode that I miss Mr. Echo. Oh yeah. He just brings such a presence yeah. and aura to his character. Well, you first meet him, he's like the intimidating like jungle thug yeah and then, and then when he's interacting with everyone here he seems very kind and reasonable and like whoa this is actually a, a gentler hulk than i, I thought <laughs> so yeah. there's a lot of good character moments this episode it, it was interesting it almost felt like uh the writers were like how many different people can we interact sun with <laughs> like unique people, you know, she has the whole ridiculous conversation with Hurley yeah. and her and Locke. I mean, like combination you don't get a lot. Yeah. And it's just fun to see some of her reactions with yeah. hanging out with some of these weirdos. <laughs> the Locke scene was very sweet. Was... Locke is, a, he is a very, yeah, he, he, his heart's in the right place. But like what he said, why aren't you frustrated anymore? Because I found what I'm looking for. The problem yeah. is when he doesn't find what he's looking for, well, the, yeah, that, that's the thing. He, he didn't really answer her question about not being frustrated. He said, I'm not lost anymore because yeah. he knew he had been frustrated just a few episodes or a yeah. few days ago. And it switches back. He has this very thin arrow, arrow, eh, margin of error. Yes, yeah. And Jen is coming along nicely on his English here, yeah. as we saw. I think part of that might be also because uh, well, we said one thing because Sun had given him a guide to English uh, a while back. But also he doesn't have... He wasn't around Michael and Sawyer quite as much, so he didn't have, you know, he he sort of had to force himself to exp- yeah. express himself a little bit better than, you know, Michael and Sawyer kind of learned to read between the lines a little bit. Yeah. But with Echo, he didn't know him quite as well. But they managed to get on pretty well, so, you know, he's learning. I do. I mean, Lost, whenever they end an episode with amazingly music and images, I just, I love that. The, the end of this <laughs> Episode was great. Well, you can never you can never go wrong with Michael Giacchino. No, you really can't. <laughs> you really can't. It's a nice dynamic to have them, Son and Jin, separated in the real in modern day and just meeting each other and finding each other for the first time in the flashback. I mean, there's a lot of those nice parallels, you know, with the finding and losing and the miscommunications and stuff like that. Yep. So, which I. I Sun Jin episodes, though, like I think we mentioned earlier, are, are, are very different beast, like like almost like Hurley episodes. Yeah, than your, than yeah. your normal run in the mill because they're their own thing. And I think another example of Lost really does care about character. Very true. So. Okay, I think. Are we ready for the next one? I'm fine for that. Yeah, let's go for it. All right. Okay, so we just finished Abandon, okay. the first and last Shannon flashback episode. <laughs> where do we start? Should we start at the end or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know where to start with this one, actually. Well, it, I'll, I'll just say this. It's usually when, a, when an episode is about, starts off with... Um, a, romantic. A, ro- <laughs> romantic, yeah. How do I put it delicately? Yeah. <laughs> then they will die. Yes, usually, <laughs> yeah. As a, as you usually roll rule TV, you had sex, you die probably. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> it, it always does it like all the time. If it's at the beginning of a show, if yeah. it's at the end, then you're you're, you're probably you're safe. safe. Yeah. So uh, it, well, it's interesting because this was the first episode I, I think where a flashback included someone who was who had died on the island. Oh, that's probably true. But yeah, I think that you know they kind of make the 
Boone shows up, he's like, oh, being dead sucks. You know? yeah. and, and it's, it's a lot of very it, uh, clever lines of dialogue. Clever lines, yeah. And it's interesting because that's a good setup for then, you know, killing Shannon. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting, too, that if you were thinking, you know, if there was anyone who was actually in danger of dying this episode, it was Sawyer. Yeah. I mean, in a not knowing what's going to happen sort of sense. Right, right. If, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there, I'm not saying... There were probably some people that suspected Shannon might die. I don't know that anyone would have really known. Yeah, because know, this but. was really the first, like, out of nowhere death yeah. I lost. Yeah, certainly compared because, to... I mean, Boone was... Yeah. The, the plane falling was sudden. Sudden, yes. But the, there was a long build-up to, will he live, will he, not, will he die? Uh, and this is like... Boom. Yeah. You put the pieces together, like, right after it, but... You know, when she goes off running after Walt, you don't think that she's really in any real danger. No. I mean, there's no... Yeah. It does seem like Walt was trying to warn her. Yeah. I mean, he's like, shh. Yeah. <laughs> like, we got to trigger happy, crazy Latino <laughs> over here. Yeah, these scenes with Walt don't fit with any of the other others, whispers, yep. scenes. It, has, it must have something to do with him being special, which we never really discovered just what all that entailed. So, I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. No, the the wall again, the wall's always been the like the the piece that most doesn't fit. Yeah. It's like they meant to do something with him that could never quite it never quite gelled or Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously he can make kind of apparitions happen, you know, with a polar bear on his thing. So, I'm sure you can come up with some sort of explanation. But I mean, if it was trying to warn him, you know, Death apparitions made a whole lot more sense toward the end. Like when we saw Michael, he actually explained, yeah, this is what these guys are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As opposed to some cryptic, you know, shh. And, it, and why was Walt like dripping water the whole time? Every yeah. time she, she, I mean, it made sense when it was raining, but yeah. <laughs> the other times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, uh, there's, there's, it's almost like we should have had a flashback about what happened to Walt and then we never could manage it because it didn't fit or Walt grown up or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. I mean, in in terms of unanswered questions, I do think Walt is the most sticks out the most like a sore thumb. Yeah, um, most of Lost, I think most of it fits pretty well, but Walt Walt is the oddball. Yeah, unfortunately, and it's this un- and I think that's a unfortunately a big problem with season two, where so much of it revolved. Well, one of the main themes is kind of this Walt. You know, that's where we have the apparitions like this one, and it, it's ne- it's fuzzy, never really gets a lot of explanation. Yeah. Well, season two is a little bit more kind of all over the place. I mean, the last two episodes had nothing to do with the hatch. I mean, yeah. they like mentioned it, Rose mentioned it once. Yeah. But for the most part, this is like, I mean, it's lost mythology. It's yeah. island mythology is well, a lot of what they're building. Well, you tell, they're like, okay, we're still trying to do our kind of season one episodes, but we've moved all this crazy stuff around, so we're also trying to deal with that simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So they're trying, trying to meld them, and later on they're like, ah, we'll just, we'll just go full on crazy. <laughs> <laughs> on minor mo- notes, so we've got lots of little things happening. We've got the little Claire, baby, Locke, Charlie, uneasiness, that comes out later on. Yeah, which I think is, now that I, th- I saw this episode, I think is one problem that I had with that whole plot thread, in that... This felt very similar to the Michael Waltz problems with Locke from last season. Like the same sort of like, oh, there's a guy and Locke is infringing on my territory, you yeah. know, sort of thing. And it's like, it wasn't a whole lot of fun the first time. And it really, <laughs> really, really want to go through this sort of frustration again. I was thinking of those, you know, it's called abandon, which obviously is the main reason because Shannon feels like no one trusts her. She's abandoned mm-hmm. by her dad and all this other stuff. But it's interesting because, you know, they talk about Claire's baby was going to be given up. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of this, like, responsibility. You know, obviously, Shannon's big thing is you need to take responsibility or aren't you. But, you know, Claire's like, everyone knows how to deal with the baby more. And, and Charlie's like, no, I'm really not an addict anymore. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. so they try to play those threads. But it is kind of a all... Well, and and they talk about abandoning uh, Sawyer. Sawyer. Or, so I mean, I yeah. was I was like picking up on those sorts of things. That, but that's it. Yeah, there is a lot of thematic so there, things because it didn't. There is a lot of thematic things. It somehow didn't quite pull it together as much. And maybe it's just because Shannon's Shannon's uh, story is is a little, little ambiguous. Weak. Like yeah. there there's a there's a lot of is she really as irresponsible as they think, or is the mother just pushing her her negative yeah. thoughts you know there's a lot and, and it could be both i mean it un- probably un- is unfortunately a lot of times it reminds just it felt like a, 
other family situations that I've heard of where, you know, there's a lot of bad feelings here yeah. and bad feelings there and, you know. It doesn't help that Shannon, unfortunately, is not a, is not a strongly defined character in some ways a lot of the other characters. Or maybe she's defined, but she doesn't have that pull of, that almost any other character can pull off yeah. in their backstory. I mean, uh, in this one, you do sort of get the sense of, you know, I, and I guess they've touched on this before, but Shannon's like everyone just thinks I'm, you know, I can't, I, I, I can't provide for myself, and so I'm just going to act like that's the and, case. And I like, I mean, it's a, it's a decent backstory and thing to re- revolve around her. It just, I don't know, it's hard to hang everything on that. For yeah, some re- for some reason, I don't know whether it's just because I don't know. I mean, it, it was a pretty strong backstory for Shannon, all things considered. It, but I guess it's just not the Shakespearean hang-up that a lot of Most our other of characters have. Yeah. have. yeah, it doesn't. Ha- and, it, and it's not every man enough, like Curly or or Charlie. Yeah, feels. or Corky enough. You know, it's yeah. just it's yeah. It's, I, they, I think they did about as best as they could given the character they created for Shannon. Mm-hmm. Shannon would fit in much better with a soap opera that's about like the the trials of the rich and. Well, not so much famous, but the rich and spoiled. And I, mean, and I, and I like, I like and I, Shannon fine. You yes, know? and I, I say that, you know, with all due respect, there are people well, that, that, you know, that go through those sorts of things. I could help but wonder sometimes. Troubles. Sometimes it, money is not much as a curse is a when, blessing. When she's talking to Saeed about, like, people just think I'm useless. Sometimes I wonder if that's also, like... Talking to the audience? Talking to the audience. Yeah. You know, because I think even when it was all, all you know, when it was modern day, mm-hmm. that... Some people probably felt that about her, just like some people hated Anne Lucia with the passion. Yeah. I mean, even now, I still find it hard to believe that Saeed loved Shannon to the extent that he cared for Nadia, who he had known so much longer. Like, even when he was saying, no, I, I mean, it's easy, I, it's easy, it's easier for me to, even on this, the second watch, to buy that he cared for her. It's yeah. harder to buy that he loved her as much you as You feel he like this is one of the first, and Lost does, has to do this occasionally, one of those first episodes where they, they almost like, in order to get to the, the, Ending they one of the episode, they had to kind of cram certain character things in faster than they might have otherwise, or or were, could be developed. Yeah, it's it's possible. You, and they, I mean, they tried with the whole you know the the thing at the beginning and all this. Yeah. Now you mentioned Anna Lucia earlier and how much people hated her, and she's she's not very likable here. But I I was reminded. I think the thing they later reveal that kind of drives Anna Lucia is that she refuses to be a victim. Yeah, and you can see her always, constantly pointing back to look what, what they did to us and everyone, and even her other survivors from Tila. It's like, yeah, but we can't just abandon our fellow man. But but Anna Lucia is so determined not to be a victim that and, and she you goes get, to crazy. And they do a great job building up this up to the next episode, which is the other forty eight days. Yeah, you know they just had like, man, they had a wretched. You know, like what happened? You know, yeah. like you better when you didn't talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, good, remember good when you're like, what is going on? Yeah. And the it, implication that they give us, especially with Michael's question, like implies that Goodwin was one of the good guys. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even with that name. Yeah. Until <laughs> you see the episode, you are thinking they lost one of their own. Yeah. Yeah. I do have to say a lot of this, you know, the, tr- the, the building up the others that they do in the beginning part of the season. I think it was probably much more effective first watch than second. Yeah. It really, a lot of it like, oh, this would be really atmospheric if I didn't know things. Yeah. It, it's curious, isn't it, though, that you know all the build-up for the hatch is really exciting and stuff, but this build-up for the others just doesn't play quite as well in the second time, I, 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 I'm feeling. And, what, and I wonder if it's just, you know, when we get to the hatch, it paid off everything it built up. Mm-hmm. And the others were so nebulous in some of their payoff. That's, yeah, that's, that's entirely possible. Um, because I mean, you had like different, I mean, we were talking different types of others. Yeah. Some of them were kind of frauds. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good point. And some, some of their impressions of others are maybe overblown mm-hmm. compared to what, you know. What it actually was. Yeah. So it's sort of like, in this case, it's, it's like watching uh, everyone being amazed at a magician while you already know the trick. Yeah. Whereas the hatch is like, yeah, there's something really cool down well, there. Well, I think that's the thing with a lot of Lost anyways is that whether you believe the trick they pulled or not, it was worth waiting for. But they always play things up to the to the greatest extreme. extent. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, every episode's like, but, you know. And then you're like, oh, no, this is what happened here. You know, uh, if you watch it a couple times. But luckily, no, normally, even when that happens, the characters are so good, you're like. Right. Yeah. So a mixed bag of an episode. Um, but, I mean. Good, I mean, lots great of good endings. Ideas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, when, you, you know, even if you don't buy all the Shannon stuff, you get there. 
And he, she runs off. He's like, stop. And then you hear the gunshot. You're like, what? And then, like, you know, Mike and Jen are just staring. And Aunt Lucy is there. And like, this is not going to go well. Yeah. A literal smoking gun. Yes. <laughs> Especially with Saeed, who has a gun we show, saw at the beginning of that. Oh, yeah. Right? That's true. So, I mean, a good cliffhanger, definitely. Yeah. Yes. But, all right. Do we miss anything? Yeah, that's all we've got. That's all we got. Well, thanks for listening to the Weekly Hijack. We will be back next time for the fallouts and uh, what happened the other 48 days. Yes. Which is, that's, I remember that being a good episode. Yeah. Tune in next time. Yep. This has been Tim. This is Nick. Good night. Bye.